In this lesson, we will learn how to set up collisions for an end dynamic solve. As we saw in the previous lesson, there's a slight issue with our fueling line. Let's go ahead and hit play. You'll notice that it falls through our surface. It doesn't collide with any object in our set. But thankfully, setting up collision objects is a very straightforward process. Thank you, Maya. <laughs> so, all we need to do is go ahead and grab the items that we would like to have the dynamic object collide with. It's really straightforward. Let's go ahead and have a look at how this works. I'll turn on mesh selection on the status bar. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one item at a time. That way it's a lot easier for us to rename our collision objects. So starting with our surface, with that selected, we can then jump to our effects module. We'll go to our end cloth menu, and here at the top we have Create Passive Collider. You'll notice that when we go to the option box, we only have one option. This option either will create a new nucleus node, or it will allow us to use an existing nucleus node. And this is fantastic, because what this means is that it's smart enough to know that, hey, once it's connected to the existing nucleus node, it will automatically collide with our dynamic object that is being driven by that same node. So watch this. Again, with our floor selected, if we choose Make Collide, instantly you'll notice that an end rigid object has been made for our new collision object. And when we play back the animation, you can see that the fueling line is now going to actually collide with our floor. How exciting. Cool. Now again, you can go ahead and set up these collision objects on multiple selections. But if we go ahead and jump to our outliner, you'll notice that we would then have to kind of figure out what each rigid object belongs to. That's why I find it a lot easier to just do this one object at a time, and we only have just one more object to apply this tool to. That's this little rod that is protruding from our gas tank. Alright, sweet. So what I'll do is go ahead and rename this nRigid object. That's going to be nRigid underscore ground. Sweet. Now let's go ahead and grab the rod next. Might go ahead and zoom in a bit closer. Feel free to also go to, let's say, shaded mode with the 5 key. And I'll just go ahead and select the object. Fantastic. Once it has been selected, again, we can go ahead and jump back to the end cloth menu and choose Create Passive Collider. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and get this renamed. That'll be nRigid underscore fueling tank. All right, sweet. Now watch this. If we were to go ahead and select the ground, and rigid ground, and jump to the attribute editor, you'll notice that we actually have a way of visually seeing how the object collides with the collision object. So we can go to our solver display and we can go ahead and switch this to collision thickness. Now you don't see anything just yet, not until you go to your show menu and you enable and rigids. Now you can see that we have this kind of boundary that shows us how the dynamic object is actually being influenced by the collision object. So if you found that the fueling line was intersecting your floor, all you have to do is go to your collision thickness here, this property, and you can go ahead and increase that, let's say to about 4. Now when you start over the simulation and you hit play, you'll notice that there's more thickness, and as a result, we can prevent any type of interpenetration that we'd get. Fantastic. So now at this point, we can go ahead and turn off the solver display, and now the result is much more natural. 
as the femur line doesn't collide with the floor in a way where we get a lot of intersecting. Cool stuff. You'll also notice that you can control bounce and friction. So if you wanted this to slide a bit more, you can go ahead and set your friction to zero. But I kind of like the way it moves along the surface. So I'll go ahead and leave it at the default value. But you have that option here. All right, super cool. So I think everything is looking great. This would be a good time to stop the lesson now that we have our collisions in place. In the following lesson, I'd like to go ahead and show you how to now speed up the simulation because you can see it's moving quite slowly. But there is a way to get speed back. So let's go ahead and talk about that again in the following lesson.